Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, so today on this technical stuff episode I am going to start installing the pad eyes at least. Um, the pad eyes are located just in front of the uh, push pit. Um, they're gonna be around about here like this. So this will uh, just support the block um, the block that will go to the code zero. Now, I should have got it just installed at the factory. It would have been much easier and actually not too much money. Um, but at the time, due to lack of experience and just not knowing we would go for that sale, uh, we decided to opt out for it. And we thought we'd be okay with the white sails for a long time, but then, you know, sailing speed just got the better of me. It needs to be really strong. It needs to be anchored into that aluminum, aluminum and plate. So this is the 72 or 70 millimeter uh, pad eye here. I was tempted to go for the 60 millimeter, but I see from the factory they are fitting the 70 mil um, pad eye there. And this gives me peace of mind actually having the bigger pad eye here uh, because I can put M8 bolts straight through it and M8s yeah, they just give me a bit more peace of mind. M6s, they just looked a bit small. So guys, as I said before, this is where the snake cams uh, really come into their own. Look at this on the phone, it's a 1080p image uh, with a light on the end as well. And you can really see in uh, a lot of the places where um, you'd want to see in a boat where you can't get your eyes in, you can't get a phone in there or light or anything like that, so it's super convenient. You see the end of the metal plate there? So I'm going to have to try and get my fingers in there or something to feel actually how long that is. That's the problem. I can't really tell. Hands haven't given me the extra um, to mount the pad eye. So I've got about, I think there's about 70 mil in front of the last bolt on the uh, push pit there. So again, guys, if you order a Hansa, make sure that you get that pad eye fitted for an extra sale. Um, it's gonna be worth your weight in gold. What I need to do now, I think, is strip this lining off here um, and then get that down. And then I'm gonna have to uh, get some thickened epoxy together, um, get some aluminum and plate, and then mount the plate up there um, and then do the drilling and then mounting into that plate because I, I do not want a code zero hanging off a pad eye that is not secure. It needs to be mounted really well and properly otherwise you're going to get the bolts ripping out of the deck. It's going to be uh, horrible and then a sail flapping all over the place and yeah, you do not want that. That pad eye needs to be really strong. What am I doing to my bow? This is insane. There's kind of no going back now. I sprung a leak. Uh, it's a pretty goddamn deep cut, there's blood everywhere. And then I've just cut myself again, so I'm not doing very well with knives today. This gap up here is a nightmare. Luckily a friend popped by as well and helped me out a little bit, so that really saved me from a little bit of insanity doing this on my own. Well, that was nice of my friend actually to come down and help, so thanks Gergi if you're watching, cheers for that, much appreciated. He bought some beers, McDonald's, perfect gift for a man on a boat doing work, that's for sure. It took me about four hours to get this panel off here. So that aluminium and plate there, it only comes forward of that last push bit bolt by about 70 mil, and it's just not enough. Um, I, I can't get the uh, pad eye on there. Um, I could, but it would be right next to the push pit and it would look pretty terrible. Eventually I did snap and go insane and I decided I thought I could actually sing, but watching this back was pretty goddamn embarrassing. Hello silence my old friend, free falling. Order it from the factory, really. This sucks. Blood, sweat. And tears are going into this boat. <laughs> oh, I do love boating, but there's times when, you know, you get cut up and you're bleeding everywhere. And yeah, you think, is it all worth it? But the satisfaction when you do something like this will be, well, it, it is good. Come on. Come on. Yes. There's the panel. Here, you can see on the starboard side as well. Very limited uh, metal block up there. 
but I have to make sure that I'm drilling straight down, not at an angle or anything like that. Um, it's especially important when uh, the aluminium goes underneath this tow rail. Uh, it needs to be dead straight down. These uh, drill bits here with the very fine point on the end are super convenient as well because they really give you a nice uh, accurate accurate hole there. Alright, looking good so far. Even with seven actually I have to, uh, it, it binds there. Um, so I think it's just going to have to be an 8mm hole and then a 6.5mm uh, where it goes to the aluminium on the other side and then I can tap the aluminium. 8mm hole. Yeah, it's going to be the perfect size actually. It might sound stupid me testing this but I really wanted to know. And then of course the chamfered bit around the outside so it uh, helps protect against this like gel coat cracking here as you can see and uh, yeah that that will help the sealant as well a little bit around the uh, bolt hole there perfect the squeeze out of glue there from the hull is actually preventing me from getting the plate in the right place so I've got to get a cutter in there now to now cut that squeeze out of glue there so I can get that plate in there um, where the holes are coming through otherwise there's not going to be enough uh, aluminium there for the bolt to come through and uh, grip I, I don't want to drill into the corner or the side of the aluminium and then have it rip out later on so as always, with boat projects, it's never as simple as you think it might be. There's always something that you have to do, but the key is to have the right tools. It's a lot of investment sometimes, but it's worth having the right things, the right cutters especially. With the glue in between the... Uh sort of the hull and the other part of the hull, or, or the deck even, is very brittle, so actually I've found better luck just hitting it with a hammer, because it just shatters off. I can get the metal things in there in just the right place now. Ow! Ow! For my next trick, <laughs> I'm looking at uh, installing the jammer actually because the 418 doesn't come with a jammer on the side or a clutch or whatever you want to call it. So the idea behind this clutch is that it will, um, the jib infurler rope will go through this one. Uh, it will then come to a block uh, around where the pad eye is now and then uh, it can go up to the winch there if necessary. Or I can just, uh, just pull it from here. It's a lot easier pulling it from here than uh, up there actually. So it will be nice to get a block on here. Uh, I might have a conflict here because I've got to get two blocks on here uh, where this pad eye is. I'm going to have uh, one block for the jib uh, infurler and then I'm going to have another block as well for the um, code zero. So somehow I've got to have two blocks there. I think it's going to work, no problems. Um, but yeah, we just mount the stuff and then we figure out that later. And then of course the final part, what you just saw there, is uh, just putting a chamfer on the hole so it stops the gel coat cracking uh, around the outside. And it also uh, allows the sealant to sink in around that, um, around the hole there so the, the holes are sealed. <laughs> Same with there over, as well, over there as well. There's, there's no core here underneath this bit. Uh, it's pure glass and gel coat basically, so that means that um, I don't have to go and uh, fill it with a thickened epoxy and then re-drill the hole. Now the reason why you might have to do that, especially if there's some wooden core inside there, is because if there's water seepage inside the hole, you do not want any water to seep into the um, core and make it rotten. That's really, uh, really a bad day out. 10 millimeters thick, 60 millimeters wide, and I've just bought a meter of that uh, just so that I can cut that up. Now, when I'm measuring this now, that's where the uh, original aluminum finishes underneath. 
Um, I could go to about here and that should be plenty strong enough to be honest. But I know at some point uh, in the future, I don't know when yet, <laughs> might be far into the future, but who knows, that we're going to um, probably put an arch on the back of this boat here. So there'll be an arch coming all the way from the uh, stainless down here, all the way across and uh, to the other side so we can have some dinghy davits coming off of the uh, arch there and we can also uh, mount a bunch of solar panels up here um, that's far into the future like I said but for now for future planning I'm gonna make these aluminium plates slightly longer down there just in case uh, we want to make an extra bar coming across here or an extra extra piece of uh, push pit there um, to strengthen the whole uh, structure so I'm gonna put a little bit of extra length there just in case we decide to do that there's no skin off my nose to do it so yeah let's go ahead and measure it up and cut the alley <laughs> It's important that this is so thick so that this stays up there. There we go, one in there, thickened epoxy holding it up, it's going to be perfect. It's slightly off angle, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. When the uh, bolt comes down through it, it'll just pull it up and then we'll be golden. A problem. I'm almost tempted to take the some kind of grinder here just to shave that few millimeters off that I need there just to save me taking this off. Jesus Christ. And of course, when you're tapping threads and it starts to get a bit too difficult, just wind it back half a turn and then wind it forward and it allows those metal shavings to fall out and it will flow freely again. Um, I've done two of the taps now. It, it takes some time, but it uh, slowly does it, you know, and you need to make sure that the taps are straight down, straight in. Same with the holes as well. They all need to be straight. Otherwise, when you mount it on uh, and all the bolts are looked look crooked crooked it's not going to look very good people have left their halyards nicely banging against the masts and i can see their wrapped uh, boats as well so that's going to be happening all winter yeah it's always nice to plan ahead so if you if you're using the seeker flex Try and do all the jobs that need doing with the Seekerflex because once you've started the Seekerflex curing, uh, it cures with moisture. So as soon as you open that thing, um, it will start curing. Now you can slow it down, but realistically you're only going to probably get about two months out of a Seekerflex, um, uh, a Seekerflex bottle. So the Seekerflex should sit in these countersinks quite nicely. Uh, and then make a good seal but ideally the bolt should just stay still and then just slowly go down with the nut on the other side it depends on the application guys if you could get to the nuts on the other side then I would just be putting nuts through and done do it that way for sure but in this case I just want them to be uh, bolts that I can just put down and take out whenever I want in case I get a leak I just want to be able to take the bolt out without um, ungluing that whole panel underneath show you the result of that that's the pad eye just need to clean it up now get the excess seeker flakes off and then we're golden with that one
Well guys, that was a mission. So we've got two pad eyes installed now, one clutch installed. Uh, this clutch might be a bit overkill for the uh, jib infurler rope, but uh, it's done all the same. Anyway, yeah, this project uh, took a bit longer than expected, as usual. You know, anything on a boat takes uh, at least three or four times as long as you expect it will. There's always that one little added complication, right? Really happy I did this installation myself. You learn a lot by doing it and, you know, it gives you a good sense of uh, satisfaction as well um, when you do it yourself. One pad eye, one clutch. That's in a perfect position there now. Now they're gonna be super strong, I think. If you enjoyed this uh, little tech session or little information giving session maybe, please give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or anything like that and then uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. I try and respond to all the comments so uh, I really like it when people write something there and if it's helped them, you know, it really gives me a lot of inspiration to continue doing this. Anyway, take care guys, be safe and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Huh? It's too tight to here. It's too tight? Yeah. yeah, I've spent many hours there, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite place down there. <laughs>